जय श्री माता जी लवली एंड जॉयस फैमिली बिफोर मेडिटेशन वेयर वी विल बी वन विद आर डिवाइन मदर लेट्स सी मदर इन आर हार्ट एंड देन वील ट्राई टू पुट आर गुरु आर मदर इन द कोर ऑफ इट आफ्टर इस्टैब्लिशिंग हर इन द हार्ट लेट्स ऑल कम टूगेदर एंड बो डाउन एट हर लोटस फीट एंड प्योर ऑल अवर डिवोशंस एंड डेडिकेशन लेट्स ऑल प्रोजेक्ट आर सेल्फ इन सच अ वे दैट वी ऑल हम्बल डाउन एट हर लोटस फीट वील आस्क फॉर नेसेसरी टेम्परमेंट necessary atmosphere needed for meditation now we'll seek permission and blessings also from mother mother today kindly make us thoughtless for that we'll take mantra of nirvichara ओम तमेव साक्षात श्री निर्विचारा साक्षात श्री आदिशक्ति माता जी श्री निर्मला देव नमो नम ओम तमेव साक्षात श्री निर्विचारा साक्षात श्री आदिशक्ति माता जी श्री निर्मला देव नमो नम ओ तमेव साक्षात श्री निर्विचारा साक्षात श्री आदिशक्ति माता जी श्री निर्मला देव नमो नम नाउ विल टेक मंत्र ऑफ महतंकारा थ्राइस टू गेट रेड ऑफ द प्रेशर ऑन द हेड ओम तमेव साक्षात श्री महत अहंकारा साक्षात श्री आदिशक्ति माता जी श्री निर्मला देव नमो नम ओम तमेव साक्षात श्री महत अहंकारा साक्षात श्री निर्मला देव नमो नम now we'll raise seven times from left to right taking attention on the heart in the spirit we all will bring down our attention on the heart and seven times left to right now we'll raise our kundalini now we are little in a balance will call mother in our heart now whatever you do it should please me is the is one of the base it should please me. that's one of the signs so how do we do it put me in your heart just try to put me in your heart is very simple i am before you now i am in person I was trying to give realization to one of my relations yes 
big. And I said that you don't close your eyes. He said, no, I'm not looking at your face. Because when I see you, I feel you are my aunt. But I'm just looking at your feet so that I shouldn't feel any more that you are my aunt. You are very great. And your face is the one that puts me into illusions. He could see, it's a Mahamaya. He said, only at your feet I look. And through your feet only I can get over this barrier, this feeling. In the same way, when I am a Mahamaya, I know I am, I had to be. But you have to put my feet into your heart. Just my feet into your heart. Because photo, face, everything might be an illusion. Might be by seeing my face, you do not get over your barriers. <coughs> to say, I must see Mother, I must do this, Mother must come to my house, she must have food at my place, she must visit my home. All this is so stupid, I cannot understand what's the matter with these people. Mother, please come in my heart. Let me clean my heart so that you are there. Put your feet into my heart. Let your feet be worshipped in my heart. Let me not be in delusion. Take me away from illusions. Keep me in reality. Take away the sheen of superficiality. Let me enjoy your feet in my heart. Let me see your feet in my heart. Only such people. Even Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesha have done that. Don't you think you have to do it? So humble down yourself. Humble down yourself in your heart. Humble down in your heart. Enjoy your humility. Enjoy your virtues. The greatest virtue of a surgery is humility. Now, let's take Mahamantras now.
गणेश मंत्र ओम तमेव साक्षात श्री गणेश साक्षात श्री आदिशक्ति माता जी श्री निर्मला देवे नमो नम Let's all put our attention on Sahasrara and take a mantra of Vichar Shithilya, the thoughtless, and Pratyan Shithilya, that is effortless, so that we can enjoy peace and joy of our spirit. Om Tami Vasakshat. श्री विचार शिथिल्या साक्षात श्री आदिशक्ति माता जी श्री निर्मला देवे नमो नम प्रयत्न शिथिल्या ओम तमेव साक्षात श्री प्रयत्न शिथिल्या साक्षात श्री आदिशक्ति माता जी श्री निर्मला देवे नमो नम मेडिटेशन मीन्स एक्सपोजिंग आर सेल्फ टू श्री माता जीज ग्रेस हर ग्रेस इट सेल्फ नोज हाउ टू क्योर अस हाउ टू मैंडर्स and we'll listen in her amritwani that we how we have to expose and we should be absolutely effortless in meditation accepting everything happily whatever way she keeps us you don't have to put in any effort this is what meditation means meditation means exposing yourself to god's grace Now the grace itself knows how to cure you. It knows how to guide you, how to settle down itself into your being, keep your spirit clean. It knows everything. So you don't have to worry as to uh, what you have to do or what name you have to take, what mantras you have to do. In meditation, you have to be absolutely effortless. See. Expose yourself fully, and you have to be absolutely thoughtless at that time. Suppose you know, the possibility you may not be thoughtless at that time. You have to just watch your thoughts, but don't get involved into them. You will find gradually, as the sun rises, the darkness goes away, and the sun's rays go into every crevice and every part. and makes the whole place lighted in the same way your being will be completely light but if you put in an effort that time or try to stop something in you or try to give it a banana it will effortlessness is the only way to meditation but you should not be lethargic about it you should be alert and watch the other side could be people just doze off no You have to be alert. If you don't know, nothing will work. That's another side of it. If you are lazy about it, nothing will work. You have to be alert and open, absolutely aware, completely effortless, absolutely effortless. <laughs> If you are absolutely effortless, meditation will work the best. Don't think of your problems at all. Whatever chakras you have, anything, just expose yourself. See when the sun shines, all the nature exposes itself to the sun and receives the blessings of the sun effortlessly. It doesn't put in any effort. It just receives itself. When it receives the sun's rays, then the sun's rays start acting and activating. In the same way, the all-pervading power starts with you. You are not to maneuver it. 
you are not to do anything about it. Just be effortless, absolutely effortless. Don't take any names. Do not bother if you are again sketching. This is sketching. That is sketching. It is worth it. It will go on working as long as it can, and it will do the miracle that it has to do. You don't have to worry about it. It knows its job. But when you put in an effort, actually you create a barrier for it. So no effort is needed. Be absolutely effortless and say, let it go, let it go. That's all. No mantras to be chanted. In case you find it's impossible, then you can take money. But there is no need even. When you put your hand towards me, that's the mantra. Sufficient. This gesture itself is the mantra. You see, there is no need to say it more, but the, the thought, the, the mind, the emotion should be that we have not spread our hands to that. And it should work. When this, when this emotion is absolutely complete, there is no need to say anything. You go beyond it. So one has to be absolutely effortless. Absolutely effortless. That is what it is. Meditation is for your own asset. It's for your own capital gains that you have to have. But once you get into it, you also achieve your powers. Like you become a governor and you get the powers of the government. At this time, you don't have to think about anybody else. You are not to put your attention to anybody else, but just receive it. Just receive it. Do not think of any other problem but that, that you have to be effortless. Absolutely effortless. It would work best on the people who are just receiving it. You have problems, that's why you are here. But you cannot solve them. They have to be solved by divine power. This must be understood fully, that we cannot solve our problems. It is beyond us to solve our problems. So, leave it in the hands of the divine power and expose yourself effortlessly, absolutely effortlessly. Sit in comfort and properly with both the feet on the ground, with both the hands relaxed like this. Be comfortable. You should not be uncomfortable at all. Be very really comfortable. Because you have to sit for quite some time. And you try to put your attention on me within yourself. If you can, to my Kundalini, if you can, you can come into my Kundalini. Just like this, the hand should be like this. Straight. So effortlessness is the key word. Absolutely effortless. Whether you are meditating before me, or before my photograph. Shimataji explains, although we should not do any effort, but we are supposed to follow Sahaj culture, which is very important for our growth. So we'll now, in Amrit Vani of Shimataji, we'll watch video and ask for forgiveness also, Shimataji, while chanting your name, mantras, or while meditating, knowingly and unknowingly, you're all innocent children, you've done any mistake. Kindly forgive all of us. 
थैंक यू श्री माता जी वट एवर वे यू विल कीप अस वी एक्सेप्ट इट हैप्पीली बिकॉज वट एवर हैपन्स हैपन्स फॉर अस बेनिफिट ओनली जय श्री माता जी थैंक यू ऑल एंड विल वॉच दिस वीडियो नाउ थैंक यू about sahaja culture all right sahaja culture i explain to you what is a sahaja culture is in which you have to grow then last night miss judy she said come in come in sit down there let him sit then last night i talked to you about ego that uh, how ego manifest itself and how it is difficult to get out of the ego it is easy to get out of the conditioning super egos but very difficult to get out of ego because ego aggresses others doesn't trouble you at all and you enjoy that aggression see now today i want to tell you about how ego has been historically traditionally torturing people around so you will see the manifestation of this ego and then you will know that if you are playing anything any role with your ego you could be a part and parcel of that destructive force so to begin with we'll see now when this ego started growing in man first of all see it started growing with the protection hmm don't put any ice in the coke all right oh, sorry. no there's no ice in this one but next one it's cool it's other cold it will be all right so the it's all right christine it's all right uh the pituitary which is within us started growing when we raised our head like this when we are animals our heads were like this at that time the pineal body as it is called was very powerful they say in human beings the pineal doesn't work out is not true it does but they don't know how it works come along nice to see you all right so this pineal body within us were was very active when we were animal state but when we raised our head you see a chemical change took place within ourselves in the sense that our brain started growing in a pyramid which i have told you how with the parallelogram of forces and all that it has started growing into a pyramid and when it became like that you see because the first it was only the pineal body looking after the super ego up to the animal kingdom up to the kingdom where the animals sort of became more sort of humanized then the ego started growing is the only animals who can use the matter uh, human beings can use the matter not the animals animals cannot use the matter for their own purpose when they started aggressing the matter the ego started developing and we developed this what you call the pyramid of our brain we started growing more and more and more and more like this but when it reached its height then we started using our ego more we didn't stop at that point we started moving on the other side so this went down and it covered it completely like that that's why we say the pineal body in the human beings doesn't work it functions no doubt it functions as a result of that you see when we saw this ego was growing as a result of that people felt extremely overconfident what's wrong business started long time back said the time of columbus as i said if columbus had come to india you would not have seen me here he would have finished all the indians there not him he was a very nice man but th- those who followed him in the same way this ego started destroying people and they had an idea for triumph and killing people occupying lands occupying territories accumulating wealth went on and on and on and on on this level then from there they started when the marriage system started in a proper way again the aggression started on the women and now the women are aggressing men like that it's all became so aggressive 
but when you aggress you don't see that you are aggressive this is the problem of the egoistical person though he may be a seeker though he may be a, a very genuine seeker but if he is in the area of ego he never feels his own catches because the ego is in between the reality and himself so he cannot see his own catches he cannot see how he is aggressing others and he doesn't see how he's hurting others troubling others torturing others and such a person can be extremely arrogant extremely uh what you call the strangulating this is what happens when you get cancer also when you get the cancer what happens it starts with the left side no doubt but when it comes into the person then he becomes a person who is vulnerable to a disease or a disease where the person is aggressed the person is aggressed the cells of the body first develop the aggression we call it malignant when this cell comes in contact with others that also becomes malignant so that's how the malignancy spreads and when it spreads what happens that supposing in the nose there are some cells which become malignant so they start obstructing other organs to grow the only nose will start growing like that you mean to say, not outside but inside so they aggress you see the aggression starts and they lose complete control with the whole because there is no coordination with the whole they don't see that the whole has to grow together and not only the nose and not only the eyes isn't it and this breaking from the collectivity is the first sign when you find a sahajogi behaves in a funny way that if he is breaking from the collectivity then he is nothing but a egoist no doubt about it. by any argument by anything but a person who is a super ego fellow will stick on to the collectivity will try to be very close to the ashram will be very close to us very much here around it even if you said we don't want to it will be there why because it re- realizes that it is aggressed and also it realizes that it can be sly So when a left-sided person enters into an ashram that person would be very nice quiet sweet everything but the entities the bhoot se name will aggress the people slyly they'll torture it. but those people can be cured very easily because they are troubled and tortured themselves but those who are egoistical will be very difficult for them to get out of that's why i've been talking about ego yesterday and today now you can see all aggression the manifested what's wrong say now i was talking about the chemicals now how did you discover these chemicals it is through your ego It's through your science now if the science is not related to god or to the whole then you go like that and then you can produce hydrogen bombs you can produce these horrible chemicals like it's what you call the fool hardiness you enter into every area every place and achieve the power over that but then you don't know what that is capable of supposing now you make computers supposing tomorrow these computers will eat you off I must tell you now there's a new disease I have discovered in people that their conscious mind overpowers them. There was a fellow who was like this, very egoistical. He didn't believe in God also. He's an Indian and he met with an accident. His wife is a doctor, she's a friend of mine, she brought him to me. In my presence he got up and walked off nicely everything. But on his own whenever he wanted consciously to do it he couldn't even raise his leg. Can you imagine? So with these egoistical people now a new disease is coming that consciously they cannot do anything. They cannot do anything. If this will come, I'm promising you now. Or I'm warning you. Now, as I warned the people who were going left-sided.
that you will have a horrible disease and this is the new disease for all the egoists. That consciously they won't be able to move, they'll be mute, sitting there only, their ego will take over. It's a very dangerous era when you are born, you must know. This is the time you are precariously placed. Either you get to God or you go to hell, there's nothing in between. So a new disease will come very soon, there's no insanity in it, nothing, you'll be quite alert but you can't move your hands, your whole nervous system refuses to work. That's going to come, very soon it will manifest. You have seen that egoistical people have been going on like Hitler and all that and they have destroyed the world and they have done so much harm to our value system. In subtle way we say that all this manifestation of 25 years of all this horrible hell they have created for us is because of the wars, because of the wars. But these wars and things, even if you avoid, by some chance you avoid it, still if ego is there it will manifest itself. If you avoid it outside, it will manifest inside and then you will find that you can't just move, you can't blink, you can't sleep, you can't move your hands. Even now people can't sleep many. And I don't want Sahaja Yogis to suffer from that horrible disease. And Western people are more liable to that kind of thing. The Sahaja Yogis who are trying to get out of the collectivity, who are asserting their ego under the name of Bhūts or whatever it is, should understand that it is 99% it is ego within us. And that ego has to be faced. Oh, I have an ego, I feel guilty. Then all right, you put it back here, all your ego, that's not the way. That's not the way you will do it. Today you are very active, working very hard, doing this, tomorrow you'll find you'll be just immobilized. You can't move. And persons don't care in this country as it is even for people who are all right. But you'll become like old people who cannot move, who see everything, know everything, who are conscious. At a very young age this will happen. The slightest accident, with slightest disturbance, you will just trigger off to that area where you will be absolutely like a mute person sitting, you can't move your finger, you can't hold anything. You will not be in a coma. Coma happens to people who take pills and things to go to the left, like drugs and things which take you to the left. But those who are right-sided, you will not be in coma. That's one thing, it's a curse. You will see everything, you'll be alert, you'll be knowing everything, but you can't even turn your head. Take it from me. That's coming very soon. You may be talking, you may not be talking. It can go to that limit. Slowly, slowly you will find your body will be immobilized. People don't understand what dangers ego can have. It's not now the aggression outside so much because it goes into left Vishuddhi and this left Vishuddhi will create this horrible disease. Now how do we control our ego is very important to understand. First of all you must write your names and beat yourself with shoes for 108 times to begin with. Secondly, discipline yourself. By disciplining, get up in the morning, do your meditation with right hand towards the photograph, left hand this way. Not to use light at all, not to use sun, don't go to the sun at all. Sun is to be avoided, keep to the moon. Read the books which describe the Mahakalis or the left side Shaktis. Don't read the books like Avadhuta's book. You should never read it because you think you are an Avadhuta, you see. He said, I am omnipresent, I am this thing. The person starts feeling, I am this. I was reading the book of Avadhuta. Yes, oh, I said, this book, 
This shows what, what's gone wrong with our incarnations. What's gone wrong with our incarnations is they never knew human beings at all, at what level they are. You come and tell them, I am formless and form, I am this and that, so what? <laughs> if you are that, all right, I am compassion, I am love, I am this, I am that, so what? How do you fill in these cups? You have to come down to a human level. That's what they did not try, and that's why it's all a waste. I think, on the contrary, everybody thinks, I am God, I am Brahma, Brahma is me, Shivoham, <laughs> finished. And then they quarrel among themselves. <laughs> that growth, that maturity has not come. It's very shallow, the whole thing becomes very shallow. You become a shallow person and you live with it. So the first thing, practical thing I'm telling you, beat yourself with you. And I'm not this. Like that you have to start, first of all, telling yourself. If you are a seeker and truthful seeker and honest seeker, then I advise you this way that you watch yourself in the mirror and tell yourself, now you, Mr. Ego X, Y, Z, will you get out from here? I know what I am, you get out. You have to get after all this and laugh at yourself, smile at yourself, make fun of yourself. That's the best, and never feel hurt if anybody says you are egoistical, and then you will say, I know, <laughs> I know, if you know you are egoistical, then how, how do you go further with it? Now, ego manifests in so many ways, through your eyes, through your ears, through your mouth, through your nose, everywhere. Because you go against God, that is, you go against collectivity, because you go against Shri Krishna, against your Vishuddhi Chakra. That's the first thing it manifests. Nowadays nobody beats people like this. You see, we have become subtler in our ego manifestation. We use this part, not hands. It can be that you show temper through your eyes, or it can be you flirt with your eyes. You become adulterous. That's why Christ has said, don't become adulterous. So now it's nice that the AIDS can work out through the tears. It's good. Used to kiss people, all right. Now kiss. Nobody will kiss now. You used all your Shuddhi Chakra so far to express all filth. Now the filth is pouring out. So, in the second stage, when we understand that it's through the Vishuddhi, that is this America, we express ourselves, our ego. So, what should we do? First of all, stop talking. Hear the way people talk. I mean, you see, you have to just start opening your mouth like this and like that, you go on, and the other is talking. You just, you tell them something, they just come on you with all the knowledge they have known, everything, A to Z, and you don't know where you are. How do you stop talking? I've told you a practical thing, I'll get you betel nuts, which I'll vibrate, put it in the mouth. <laughs> and you take it out when you have to talk, otherwise keep it there. That's Sri Ganesha. Don't take it out, stop talking. If you stop talking, your hypocrisy will go away. But through our face, we are hypocritical. Everything works out through Vishuddhi. Now see, a person who is extremely aggressive, you see, can also act to be very, very sweet, you see, if they have to exploit you or make money out of you. They can act, acting. The whole acting comes through this Vishuddhi. Then you act. You are a very gentle person. You are very good, but you are not. You are aggressive. So, for that you have to know that talking less will reduce fifty percent of your hypocrisy and acting, fifty percent. Now fifty percent still left. Now what to do with the fifty percent? <laughs> fifty percent is a thing where we have to know what other chakras are responsible for ego manifestation. 
is one is the hamsa is very important hamsa is we use when we want to show temper indifference <laughs> then a person thinks oh god what have i done to this person that's how we show our temper all the time like this that's hamsa and that's why we have to use what we call the simple thing called ghee or something oilish for ears for nose for eyes the kajal and for this portion also you have to put some ghee in hot water or milk and take it so that you soothe down your nerves and you soothe down your vishuddhi and also you soothe down the to call in a general way is the peritoneum but is the is the lining lining as we soothe down our fingers and hands uh, when they are dry we have to soothe rub ghee here ghee here oil here oil there in the head now the modern style is not to put oil in the head you will become bald balded gentleman of course you can still act like you'll brenner <laughs> but he died of cancer <laughs> his sister is our disciple and you will develop funny hair styles everything and now this modern fashion has started don't put any oil i don't know from where it has come the children also they say don't put any oil in the ears this is doctors they want to create patients don't listen to them before going traveling or anywhere put oil in your ears into your noses uh, not the oil but ghee and control your peritoneum through your hamsa chakra is very important. this is the chakra which really helps you very much Sutta. Now in Sanskrit and also in a many colloquial language, ghee is called as neha, and sneha is love. Neha also is love. So you have to oil it down, so the frictions are less. We know in nature when we have to reduce the friction, we put oil. Like we have to say a uh, launch a ship. that i have launched i know what it is they had to put grease on the thing and you just touch the ship and the ship moves so smoothly on to the sea beautifully it moves in india they put bananas because banana is a uh, very easily available so they put bananas is here and, there. and here they use grease in england for example they use grease so in the same way we have to grease ourselves our language our tone our speaking must be greased greased with love and love is such a powerful thing that can attract anyone let it be even hitler when you talk to someone or say something it should have that coating of chocolate of love then you can even give castor oil i do that <laughs> so all these things are to be understood in its essence that we should not become stupid as other people are we are yogis and we have to have a ideal life which manifests itself in all kinds of dynamism and we do not waste this great blessing that we have got now with this another chakra which is always got is the agya agya chakra in the agya chakra we have to become thoughtlessly aware but we can if you watch your thoughts you will know mostly we think of the people who have harmed us who have troubled us sometimes we had the we have the glimpse of the good things also we think of the good people also sometimes normally we are thinking about the people who have harmed us hurt us this thing that now christ who is shri ganesha 
and who has all the powers to kill us and finish us off and destroy us completely has given us the greatest weapon is to forget so the mantra here is for you. and you have to see that you forgive others anybody says anything forgive when you forgive god takes over and he knows how to handle or mishandle or to do whatever he likes to that person that's not your job you just forgive so you give him a ticket go to god i forgive you i'm not thinking and you have to forgive and that is the thing you can enjoy your agya chakra very well and raise your kundalini beyond by saying forgive 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 three times and you have to say the mantra of nirvichara no thoughts agya is the one which brings thoughts to you that's why christ was so particular on the eyes that you thou shalt not have adulterous eyes try to concentrate your eyes on the mother earth for some time she sucking so that your attention doesn't become that wobbly becomes concentrated and equalized and balanced when that is done your eyes become so powerful even if you look at somebody you can cure that person and the innocence will start coming in your eyes you will not have lust and greed it's a very dangerous thing people are playing here i mean i didn't know all these things people do but I saw it in the west I mean everybody is looking at every girl what is the joyless pursuit why turn your eyes to anything that you don't get joy out of at every girl a man is looking a girl is looking at every man what's this nonsense why waste your energy i always look at about 3 feet height you see all the flowers there you see all the children <laughs> one day somebody asked me don't you feel like looking at handsome men i said i i am not a fool i look at the most handsome things at 3 feet level <laughs> he said you must be a fool to look at this i am not that's what it is so that will give you tremendous amount of energy because you preserve all your energy through your eyes eyes are the windows of that power if you try to preserve it so right otherwise like now they save water because you wasted your water so now save water but when your eyes are in a scent then the shower of bliss you enjoy that bliss you don't have to look at anyone you don't have to say anything you just enjoy just feel the joy pouring into you completely because the ego has vanished this is an aggression to look at everyone like that is an aggression i have known people who mesmerize women who mesmerize men i have known women like that i have seen in the parties i see the boots coming out of these women and they look at a man and he gets transfixed completely falls in love with that woman till he becomes a beggar she just lynches him is prostitution by men or women the horrible thing. it's dirty your eyes so keep your eyes steady try to steady them if they try to go here and they tell them look there that's the mother earth she's the one who gives us all beautiful things look at that and then the beauty of that mother earth will come into your eyes and the cleanliness and the innocence will cleanse others that's how it should be so to fight this ego one has to be prepared and must have proper will power because ego kills the will power of man completely a man who is a egoist is left with no will power he does what the ego tells him it can murder people which can be violent all the violence in america is from the ego manifestation uh because there is no respect of the law not of human laws but not of god's laws also that's how people behave they incur diseases horrible things a person who is not egoistic will not get cancer 
You have to be egoistical to get cancer, though it's a left-sided thing, but you have to have ego. Vulnerability comes through ego and then it acts. If you are egoistical, you are vulnerable to cancer. So first thing, if you survive from, say, cancer, you will have the other one waiting, where you will be transfixed like this. <laughs> You will become like some of the things I see in the TV where people are given some sort of an uh, artificial thing and they are just nothing but uh, machines and they move their hands like machines, they walk like this, they lo look like human beings and they walk straight like this, they can't feel anything, like that you'll become. Because ego takes you away from emotions and away from the left side and you become really a person like a machine, you become like a machine. I met a one uh, dentist, he came to me, he said, Mother, now I cannot uh, cry, I cannot weep, and I do not feel bad when somebody dies. I said, so what do you do? I jog. <laughs> I mean, jog means running away from yourself. Jog for how many, how many hours? five hours. Out of the ten years he is awake, five hours he jogs. What else will happen? So all these artificial things have come to us because it's a manifestation of somebody's ego. Even drugs came to us because somebody wanted to make money out of us. All these gurus, they wanted to make money out of us. You see, they are more interested in making money, all egoistical people are very money-oriented. They can't get out of it. Any amount of money you give them, whatever... I mean, I have blessed people with thousands and thousands of rupees, billions and billions of things, but still their money orientation doesn't go, and then they lose it in a time, just like that. Just like that. Naturally. Because they do not recognize it's a blessing, one has got it. Now you have to share it. I mean, actually, through coming to Sahaja Yoga, there was one gentleman who was really absolutely on the verge of collapsing without any money. And he's become such a rich man overnight, and overnight he's become again the same. Is an example? He came to me, he came to Sahaja Yoga, he became very rich, he became all this, and then suddenly he lost everything. And even Sahaja Yogi started saying, Mother, who come to you for a short time and then they go away, they become very rich. I said, all right. And then, see, after one year, before and after, where are they now? This man has become so poor that he doesn't even have money to take a bus. So the calamities come in like that and then they don't understand. But I'm telling you, unless and until you talk of calamities, people don't learn. They need a shock, otherwise they don't want to get out of their egos, they cannot. They live with it, they don't want to understand that this is going to happen, then better do it. When they see it happening, this case, one case of one gentleman has brought forth before all the Indian Sahaja a very big lesson. They were saying that if you come to Sahaja Yoga for a short time and get out of it, then you become very rich. This is what they had reached, their conclusion. And now they don't say so. Because the medium through which you have got is God's grace. If it is lost, you have lost it. So don't live with full confidence with that horrible ego of yours. It is going to overpower. And as you have seen, the booths combine, also egoistical people will always combine. There are two egoists, they'll always be very friendly, because they combine together, they are just the same. But when they are immobilized, then what is going to happen? They'll be all sitting like statues. We can make statues out of them, I think. <laughs> what will be the next use, I don't know. Because they are not dead, they are living. But they can't eat food, 
You can look at food, they can't eat it. But if you put injection, it might work out because the uh, parasympathetic might be working or maybe sympathetic might be working, the autonomous might be working, but the rest of it is finished. The central nervous system is finished. It can happen suddenly to someone. Now write it down. Today I have told you about this disease. <coughs> try to keep to the group. Try to share everything. And don't try your cunning, clever methods. Cunningness is cheating yourself. Gregor has told me, Mother, this intelligence, human intelligence, is so intelligent that it can cheat yourself. That's what I see. Why do you want to cheat yourself? Are you mad? This is what one has to realize. Once you understand that, you see, most of the problems of this world will subside. How do you have a atom bomb? How do you have all these things? Science never said you make atom bomb. Science was given to you for constructive work, for saving time for meditation, not for making atomic uh, bombs to kill you. No. But in a way it acts, because America has made some bombs, Russia has made some bombs, like two devils sitting there on their heads. Now they cannot put the ha their hands to the buttons. <laughs> it's a good idea. <laughs> they are afraid of the devils they have created themselves. See, that's what, because it is so overpowered. So if you want to avoid your own destruction, then beware. Be aware of yourself. Not to boast that I know, I know. No! How you behave. Some people are such that they say, we can't live in an ordinary place. We cannot uh, sleep in an ordinary place and all that. That means they are beggars. That's what I feel about such people. Because if you are the king, like I am, the queen, I should say, I don't want anything. You make me sleep under this tree, I can sleep, I can sleep anywhere, I can live the way I like. And you know, I live in a palace, actually a palace. So what? That palace is not important to me. Wherever I go, I make it a palace for myself, because I am not bothered about comforts. No comfort can crawl upon me. Nothing can dominate me. Nothing can come over me. Nothing is important to me. Because I'm the queen. If I'm the beggar, then I want comfort, I want this, I want that. There's no want left, nothing wanted. In that state when you arrive, then you will enjoy Sahaja Yoga, your spirit. And that's what happens when people come to India. I was amazed to see these people who came. First time we spent forty thousand dollars, and five Americans came. Four, four or five? I mean, which is? Four. Okay, one, huh? one Canadian, four Americans. Four, one Canadian. So five, and four ran away. Imagine how expensive they are. Four ran away. We tried, they came to see me and all that. No, Mother, we can't stand this disease. We cannot stand this discomfort. What comfort do you have here? I don't see any comfort. Horrible since I've come to this New Jersey, my head is off. I've been sick, horrible place. What comforts you have? And there they were boasting so much. They ran away. So you understand that those people who are asking for things all the time, begging for things, have not achieved anything in life. Now when you are coming this time to India, we are going to have a much more Spartan life, because we are not going to stay in any building whatsoever, as far as possible, except in Rauri, maybe there also. We are going to put you up in the pendals outside absolutely in the forest where there will be tigers. <laughs> <laughs> and 
there will be snakes crawling up to you. And you'll have to have your baths in the rivers, which are flowing with a big speed. Oh, that's falling off. Just be careful. And then also you will have the beautiful music of the morning birds and beautiful fragrance. It's so beautiful and soothing. There were grows the essence of life. And that's what we have decided. I mean, I can live there, why can't you live? I can't understand. What is so special about you? I'm an old woman of sixty three years of age, and all my life my father or my husband have been extremely over-comfortable people, I mean, luxurious people. I mean, I have never known how to take a taxi or a take a bus all my life, I've never known how to take a ticket to go by train. <coughs> Uh, I've never travelled by air alone. I mean, I don't know how to travel by air alone. I mean, I've always been like that. But I don't need anything. I can travel alone, I can go anywhere. I can do everything without feeling any fear, without feeling any problem, because as long as I'm with myself, what is there to worry? And that's what we have to achieve. That's what we have to do. Once we achieve that kind of a temperament, it's so beautiful, you'll respect yourself, you'll love yourself, and that's how you love others and respect others. Those who don't respect themselves cannot respect. Egoistical people do not respect themselves. If they respect themselves, they would not be egoistical, but it's so shameful to be egoistical. If you say you are very egoistical, that person will punch you. Even if you say something else, they won't, will they? No. But if you say you are egoistical, they'll punch you. That means they feel hurt, they don't want, but they are. If they don't like it, why do they have it? So it's a very difficult thing to move that ego from your heads. And you catch from one to one so fast that sometimes I don't understand. But Indian climate and Indian upbringing is such people don't get egoistical. But I have not known of anyone who is today good and tomorrow standing with a punch. I have not seen anyone like that in India. Very steady people. Now see, here is just sitting somebody, a doctor, and he missed his Nobel Prize, a man like that. Can you believe that such a man is sitting before us? He is another one. You won't find this with anyone in India behaving like that. They have ego, very subtle egos. Bureaucrats have, I must say, and other politicians have, but till they do not come to India, they are all right, uh, to abroad. But when they come abroad, then they get even worse. But normally a person's status is known the way he is humble in India. Otherwise they don't believe you are from a royal family. You are from a royal family. You are extremely humble. That's the sign. Like the Shesha, I talked to her, five sentences I said. And she said, this lady is very honourable, from a royal family must be. I am, but, I mean, I am, but, I mean, I never told her, which is not known to many people, but she said she must be from a royal family. Well, what is the need to insult others? What is the need to shout at others and talk in that manner? There's no need. You must talk in a way that is sweet and nice. It looks nice. It shows better. The personality is better seen by others, at least for the sake of congenial concord with others. Please try to get over your nonsensical ego. It keeps you out of bounds for the joy, the ocean of joy that you have to have. You are a miserable creature, for nothing at all making everybody miserable. But face it, face it, don't put it in your left Vishuddhi, Oh, I am egoistical, I am very unhappy. 
something finished. I cannot cure that. I am already suffering, you see. All the time I get pain here, pain here, I don't know what to do. Since I have come to the West, I have developed a problem here, because all of you having this left issue with me, and I have put you inside my body. You don't know how much you make me suffer. So I don't mind. I can see that. I have to request you now to look after yourself and behave in a manner that this American ego disappears, because there is another way out, that is Sri Krishna's style, which I don't want to use just now. The first destruction will start in America. You then construction will start. Destruction is impossible, the clouds of destruction will disappear. Completely disappear, the cool wind will blow it out. But you have to be sages of sincerity and understanding without any ego. That's your responsibility for your children, for your progeny, for your country, it is your responsibility. Good? So now I'll be going for the another style, and in the evening I may not meet you again. But uh, I hope you people will now give the full list of the people who want to marry. Those who have not yet decided should decide. Even if you are not decided on people, and you will give me the list of the people who want to get married in India. If not this year, then next year, something like that. All of you should give your names, those who want to marry. That's very important because it is impossible to do it without getting everyone there. That's one point. Secondly, we should decide how many are going, how they are going, and all these things are to be done in a proper systematic way. And Babbitt must be informed about it. Everybody should say that so many are going from Los Angeles this way, they are going from this way, and Babbitt should be able to organize it. There should be no competition, nothing. And you should see to it that you get the cheapest price. But not at the cost of disturbing yourself. Whatever you can get easily, just get it. That's not so important. The third point I have said that there is no need for you to bring too much of luggage, especially for ladies. There is no need to bring any makeups or anything in India. No need at all. It's a country where your skin improves by itself. You don't have to do much makeup or anything. It's very it's a good country where your skin nourishes itself and you'll feel very nice. And even if you have to buy, you can buy them in India, which are made out of not any chemicals or anything, but natural things, you see. Even for toothpaste and all that, it's better to use Indian toothpaste, I think. Now I've reached that conclusion. But all these horrible toothpaste here and the things are, I don't know what chemicals they have, I don't know what will happen to the teeth. So far my teeth are intact. <laughs> and I've never been to a dentist. But I feel, I feel they are full of horrible chemicals in it. So don't spoil your skin with these horrible makeups and things like that. I mean, to find a proper shampoo here, I find it impossible, because sometimes maybe some shampoos can just take out your hair like that, you see. So try to acquire habits which are simple, natural habits in a living, not primitive, again I say not primitive, but not very elaborate. And don't pay so much attention to your body as you do. There's no need to pay. It's all right, whatever God has given you the body is all right. You don't have to worry too much about it. To do some little exercise in the morning or something, do your meditation properly, be normal people. You don't have to overdo anything. A little bit is all right. But just keep in the center. Don't go to extremes in anything. Now you have to bring a sweater and things like that. And as I told you, a, a proper bedding, as I told you, that you have to pray. Now, in India they will supply you with sheets and everything, uh, with nice cotton sheets, because you must use as far as possible cotton and as far as possible silks or cotton, natural things, not artificial things like 
you will get into trouble if you use plastics and things like that. So as far as possible, try not to bring many clothes because we can get you everything. Now to come to the practical side of it, I would like to have all their, uh, what you call, uh, uh, sizes, sizes, sizes. Uh, written down properly, but make them into four sizes. You sort it out, you can do it. Put them into four sizes for kurtas, and for ladies also blouses into four sizes. So you make four sizes, A, B, C, D sizes for men and women. And we keep that ready for you when you come. Imagine how much these Indians work for you, and how much do I donate? And that's all donation, whatever I give, what remains the money is, it's so little. And they are now going to donate so much money for your school, for your children. Imagine, that Indian should do it. It's not very good. We have such a little money, to be very frank, which has been given, that I really feel shy to take that money to India. So I've kept it now with Arno, every money is kept there, let him keep it there. But if you have to have a school, we have to have a good school, and for that we need money. But just now you don't think of donating anything, because though you are rich people, you are incapable of donations now, I can see that clearly. Because you have to travel, you have to spend money on your travels, Indians don't have to do that. So it's all right. But whatever they have said, a little amount for donations, that much you give them, and you come there with love. But people come back like traders, I tell you, really like traders, because India is a place where one can buy lots of things. You like everything, you want to buy this, you want to buy that, you want to buy that, you want to buy that. That's not good. Buy few things of symbolic value, whatever you need, you should buy. You cannot bring all the things that you need from India. But people, when they travel like that, it's very shameful, I think, sometimes people don't understand how yogis have to carry so many things. Now. Uh, you should carry things which are uh, useful to you, which are good for you, but not too much. 